Welcome back guys. Well this is going to be the get home bag. I've got it right here. We're about to go over it. And this is going to be a kind of a continuation of my EDC. And I'll have the video link for that right here where I did that video just a couple ones back. Um, this is going to be taken from a backpacker's perspective. And that's kind of how I view this since I do backpack and do some day hiking. Um, this is going to be comparable to something that I would carry on a day hike just to have some bases covered to consider here let's dive right into the bag and I'll talk a little bit more about just the whole overall philosophy at the end so here we go okay let's just go over and cover the small pocket first on the outside you'll notice here I have a couple of small nano carabiners and I have the uh, peanut lighter here from County Com. crack right into this small pocket right off you see we have a streamlight micro stream flashlight and uh, this is useful just for uh, getting right in here and I know I have this one light right here first off on the left uh, just a couple of pins here is a sharpie marker and an, another pin uh, nothing too special there I have a small pair of waterproof binoculars here and I actually have my uh, some paracord there at the bottom of that pocket and I like to keep this outer pocket uh, pretty light if I need to add or some or take some items out um, this is going to be kind of more of an organizational pocket. And here I just have a simple Ziploc bag with a bandana in it, some extra Ziploc bags, uh, some duct tape, some a tube of toothpaste, and some uh, and a little travel toothpaste, and also some water purification tabs right there. And that's it on that small pocket. Let's go right into the main contents, which I actually have laid out here. All right, starting underneath here, we have uh, some basic shelter options. Shelter is just one of those things. If, if I was in my vehicle and say I was stranded in the snow, I'm probably going to shelter near the vehicle. Uh, the vehicle could get cold, but it's going to offer me some wind protection there. Really, the, the key underlining theme in all this isn't so much as your gear. It's, um, it's really what's up in your head and how you manipulate your uh, your settings and trying to keep your core body temperature going and uh, you know some calorie intake but uh, you know I just want to cover some key items here because gear is always fun to talk about and it's always kind of interesting to see what different people keep in their kits so under here I have an emergency space blanket and uh, on the other side it's olive green on one side on the other side it's uh, you know like a space blanket a reflective type material and I would call this a real heavy uh, emergency space blanket or also kind of like a light tarp it's five by seven I could use it as a lean-to and here also have the heat sheets uh, space blanket also to augment with that and some paracord that we mentioned earlier so it gives me some uh, some very light you know, just with those three items there that's uh, right at a pound and even if I was on a day hike and I didn't plan on staying overnight but something were to happen where I needed to uh, shelter in place uh, that's going to give me some some good options there along with a fire so moving on to the first aid kit this originally started as an adventure medical kit, the ultralight 9 and then once USNER doc started a lot of his first aid videos um, some of his field medicine and first aid kits I was able to kind of soup this up and kind of get up to kind of his level so it's kind of like his IFAC first aid kit so also in here I also keep some uh, baby wipes just to kind of help clean up and uh, hygiene is key over here I've got my uh, my fire kit and this kind of it keeps evolving and this is more than I need there's so much redundancy in here but I'll just go through it if anything it gives you guys some quick options the biggest tip in here is that just a good piece of heavy foil and um, I like to use this to either create a windscreen or a base if things are really really wet this is a quick easy base to to build my tinder on and uh, I'm just gonna make a mess here I've got a couple of packages of uh, cotton balls and Vaseline to use as tinder also some esbit cubes these are uh, these are great these could use you know solid fuel tabs could work as a uh, 
is a great fire starter and or a uh, small stove for a while to possibly build a fire on and get some water boiling that way. I have a simple uh, light my fire fire still here. My go-to every time, always try it first, my Bic lighter. Uh, that's what I always go to first, uh, just for, uh, for speed. And then I have some uh, waterproof, stormproof REI matches. I keep all those here in this bag, which is 99% waterproof anyhow. It's got a uh, plastic membrane in there. The, uh, if it were to get submerged and stay underwater, water would get in through the zipper area. But some of this, most of this is all waterproof anyways, like these, the tenders already separated. Um, so anyhow, moving on, a uh, water bottle, water container. This is just a simple clean canteen, 27 ounce. I did a little mod on it with some high heat paint and it did give me a 15% boost in uh, performance. Over here, this is kind of a, a tool item and I am huge, huge on these little folding pruning saws. The Laplander is another one, real popular when you see a lot of bushcraft guys go into. This is just a Corona one that I picked up at a local big box hardware store. Uh, it weighs like six ounces and uh, this saw, it it's, uh, cuts on the pull stroke. It's just, it slices through the wood like butter. And uh, again on a a 12 mile hike from work to home. I'm not going to be stopping to camp out and build fires and roast marshmallows, but this is one of those tools that it's hard to uh, it's it's hard to do what this can do uh, with bare hands. So I'm going to bring that six ounces. It's small and compact. I'm going to skip this for now. We'll hit this last uh, snow sealed leather gloves. Uh, just to protect the hands, obviously. This is going to be my food rations kit. And uh, in here I have a cliff bar. It's probably, I would say, add all this up, it's going to be close to maybe 1,200 calories, about a, you know, two small meals. So, cliff bar. It's just a simple plastic spoon. It's not Lexan, it's just, you know, got it at an ice cream store. It was free and uh, works great. Uh, just some trail mix here that I actually wrote a date on. Make sure I'll eat that. Uh, it probably has no danger of expiring because I sometimes will go in here and eat eat this as a snack and then replenish it. So that's key is replenishing your supplies. Even in your first aid kit, if you use items, you need to always go back and replenish it. Uh, what else we have here? Have some Gatorade mix. Uh, I can always add that to the water here in the water bottle. Uh, it's great, great boost. You know, also if I needed to boil some water in this container, um, you know, this this would be good to kind of flavor that up a little bit. Uh, a couple packages of tuna, which the spoon would come into play and help out on those. Also, the spoon would come into play and help on this. Yeah, I'm bringing a canned item. Well, that's crazy. Those are canned items are heavy. But the uh, reason I'm kind of bringing this is this is a great little sugar boost here. Some of the other items are a lot of carbs and proteins, but this is a lot of carbs and sugars. And uh, also, when I'm done using this, this can can double as a uh, an extra container. So it's not just the contents of the can, but this is a multi-use item. And uh, yeah, it is heavy. It's the heaviest out of everything. But my whole kit, total weight with water, everything is under 15 pounds. So I'm good with this. Okay, and moving on to this. This is going to be my signaling and communications pouch, and it's the same type of container which has a uh, plastic membrane inside. So it's going to give me some waterproofness there. Here I have my uh, Phoenix L1D torch with headband, and uh, this is a great little flashlight here. And this goes with it. If you know this doesn't weigh anything, it fits in there. It's just a light diffusing wand, and. Uh, and just always keep those together. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, in here also we have just a simple silver compass. And I also have a map, obviously, in my vehicle and a small map in the bag. Always keep a whistle with my uh, compass right in the rain notepad. And remember in the smaller pocket we had the uh, pins. So, Okay, here, this is kind of a multi 
County Com purchase also. It's got a lot of, uh, I make up several of these and keep them in vehicles. And what it is, is there's always a, uh, an extra whistle with an extra breakaway lanyard in there. So it's, you know, having one whistle is great. And this is kind of a tip I picked up from Nothing Fancy. But having two, you can give this to a buddy and you can kind of signal each other. We have that, have some marking ribbon here to leave a trail, like say if I was lost on a day hike, this is gonna leave a uh, trail of kind of where I'm going. Uh, again, with a notepad, leave that either with the vehicle or something large, your first ribbons and uh, mark a direction, like if you're headed toward a saddle or toward a river or uh, heading northbound. Um, these two items work well together. It's and also this is a uh, County Com uh, Lexan signaling mirror. So I keep the, the mirror, the, the ribbon, and the whistle. And these three items always kind of go together. It came in this little pouch. Okay, also in here I have a Sinjian AM FM weather radio. And uh, this thing's great. It has a uh, little set of headphones. You can also use the external speaker. The headphones also work. You can plug these in and use them as a external antenna. And it has a switch here on the side. This is just a, a great little radio. The switch on the side, you can still use the speaker when the headphones are plugged in or you can switch to mono or stereo depending on uh, the strength you want to put out with the headphones. But you have your weather band channels, uh, presets, clock, uh, it runs off double A's, which works great because my flashlight also is double A. So, which brings us to our next item is the uh, lithium double A batteries. And these batteries run everything that I have, except for the Streamlight MicroStream flashlight, which is in the small pocket, which is a backup flashlight. It runs off of a triple A. But this is going to be my main power source, so I want to run the, the radio and also the flashlight. So... All right, moving back to the front of the bag now, or actually, I guess this would be the back, the Camelback hydration compartment. And in here, I keep my Glock 19 with a Weapons Light Streamlight TLR3. Let's go ahead and unload that. But uh, that's it, guys. That is my get home bag slash day pack slash whatever you want to call it. It's not a 72 hour kit. It's not a bug out bag. It's just a simple light pack that I use. These items here is just going to help me get to where I need to be, uh, stay light, and uh, cover some ground if, I, if I'm, say I'm broke down again and trying to need to get home, or if I get hurt in the woods and um, I can make some comfort here, uh, build a quick shelter, wait for help, you guys kind of get the idea. This is what I keep uh, close by. This is what I carry. And uh, it's right under 15 pounds. It works for me. Feel free to comment. Appreciate the comments. And uh, appreciate more than that. Y'all taking the time to watch this video. And take care.